decided to hold its winter army maneuvers at war games in West Vista this year, and the whole town is in a martial dither. And here approaching the headquarters of the Commandant to offer his services as military advisor, we find Fibber Lafayette, where are we, McGee? <laughs> Behind the plow, the uniforms, it plow. Who goes there? <laughs> oh, hi, bud. What was the question? I said, who goes there? <laughs> I ain't going, I'm coming. Oh, excuse me. Come ahead, Dan. <laughs> thanks. Which way does the commander stand, bud? It's the big one over there with the American flag over it. Oh, thanks. I'll go. Hey, that flag's upside down. That's a distress signal. Yeah, I know. The general had lobster and ice cream for dinner last night. <laughs> He ought to keep his troubles to himself. When I was a general in the army, I had a flag tattooed on my stomach. Then when I got upset, my distress signals were flew right. How much obliged, bud? Okay. Oh, you're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. You'll never get rich. You'll sleep in a ditch. You're in the... Hey, bud. Is the general in? Yes, but he's busy with the chief of the cavalry. Oh, I see. Try to pick the winners at high Well, oh, tell him Major McGee retired to see him. Yes, sir. Ah, the good old army. Them was the golden days. Gold brick on the arm, gold fish for dinner, and gold bricking all day long. Come in, Major McGee. Okay, bud. Well, <laughs> nice of them to put that door on this tent. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody could tell I was entering. Hi, General. Good day. Did I understand the sentry to say that you were a retired officer, Mr. Uh, the... uh, McGee, bud? Silver McGee. Late Major, the U.S. Marines, Air Service. Tank Corps, Cavalry, Engineers, Infantry, and all stuff like that. There. How about intelligence? Oh, enough to get by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very good, yes. <laughs> Major, this is Colonel Hackamore of our cavalry unit. Oh, hi, Colonel. Didn't we meet at old Fort Blunder in the Mexican campaign? I was never assigned to Fort Blunder. <laughs> Neither was I. It's a small world. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Major Key, but I, uh, that is, we're in the midst of planning our maneuvers, and we're very busy. Well, that's so. okay. Well, the reason I come in is, uh, I thought you might want a military advisor, somebody familiar with the local uh, territory. Well, now, I... Now, for instance, suppose you plan an attack on the opposing forces and march across town to take them in the flank. Now, you wouldn't want to find your advance guard smack dab up against the brewery or something. <laughs> The fellow has something there, General. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> A very interesting thought, very interesting. You say you're a retired Major McGee? Yes, they retired me for insubordination. Is that so? Mm-hmm. What did you do? Well, one of the mules died, and they gave it a military funeral. They made all the officers face each while they played taps, and I wouldn't do it. I faced the other way. Well, why did you refuse to face each? I'm a West Pointer. <laughs> <laughs> what campaigns did you serve in, Mr. McGee? Well, I served in Mexico, General. Pershing put me in personal charge of catching that Mexican bandit. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, how did he happen to do that? Well, a bunch of us officers was whooping it up at a soda fountain down on the border one night. And the soda jerk says, what do you have, gents? And I says, I'll take vanilla. <laughs> well, Pershing heard me and thought he, he thought I said, I'll take vanilla. So <laughs> he gave me the job. Sounds like just the man we need for the local maneuvers, General. <laughs> I think so myself, Colonel. You're uh, familiar with modern tactics, Major? Am I? Why, oh, shut, fellas. I was a master of military tactics when I was just a kid. Why, officers from all over the world used to come to our house to watch me play with my toy soldiers on the carpet. Carpet tactics, McGee, I was known as an end day. <laughs> Carpet Tactics McGee, the common, courageous captain of cavalry, quick to calculate a campaign to keep cool killers from coming over and conquering our continent with crash and cannon, continually quizzed captives to collect confessions that could keep us coping with their conniving cohorts, and the keenest kid at cracking codes from the clattering case on to Camp Custer to the clean-cut guilties of cold Caledonia. <laughs> Splendid, splendid. I think you're just the local contact we need, Major. Uh, suppose you wait here in my tent while the Colonel and I check our supplies. Okay, bud. <laughs> Come, Colonel. I told, General. <laughs> well, here I am in the Army again, and I didn't even have to call. <laughs> now, let's see. <laughs> Come in. Well, what you want, sis? 
I'm a nurse in the hospital unit, sir. Well, then why ain't you in uniform? I'm supposed to be on leave of absence, sir. Now they want to cancel my leave during these troopers. Please don't let them. Hmm. Now, what's your name, sis? Adam, sir. Eve Adams. Eve, eh? Oh, well, quit worrying, sis. Nobody named Eve should have her leave canceled during winter maneuvers. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's see. I guess I better glance over these papers. Commandant's headquarters, Major McGee speaking. What's that, bud? Is that so? Well, send up five airplanes and have them spray the camp with paint remover. A fine army. They camouflage three ammunition trucks to good, they can't find them again. <laughs> Lieutenant Novus reporting, sir. Oh, hi, Don. What do you want? May I have a furlough, sir? Listen, Don, according to these papers, you're the 14th lieutenant that passed for furlough in a period of two days. Interesting period, wasn't it? <laughs> what was? The 14th. <laughs> How does Army Life agree with you, Don? You're looking very well. Oh, I feel swell, sir. We're very exhilarated. In fact, I'm so happy I could sing only a rose in a few minutes. <laughs> Pretty clumsy introduction, but we got it in, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead, Lieutenant Norris. Only a rose. That's well, Don. That was great, Don. And that Billy Mills' compliment was very good, too. I'll see that you boys get... Commandant's headquarters. Major B speaking. Oh, hi, Billy. Yes, I did. That was a beautiful compliment. What? What do you mean you want a promotion? What are you now, Mills? Major General? No, no, I'm sorry, Billy. I can't do it. Well, we just can't, that's all. This is the Johnson Wax Program. How would it sound if we had a musical number presented by General Mills? <laughs> all the dumb clucks I ever saw. Oh, there, Johnny! Need any new recruits? <laughs> <laughs> nope, I don't believe so, old-timer. Hey! I says, no, we got all the soldiers we need. Though I can understand why living in a pup tent would appeal to an old Airedale like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hit it. <laughs> the way I hit it, one fellow says to the other fellow, he says, see where them southern planters are worried about the big cotton surplus. That so, says to the fellow, why don't they get all the gals to wear cotton stockings? Tell you what says the first fella. That way, both the cotton and the gal would be out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> just goes to show, Johnny, why gals like silk. It just goes to show. <laughs> oh, no, Moss back. <laughs> Imagine that old fossil talking about silk stockings. Well, I guess the guy is only as old as he looks. Apparently, he still looks. <laughs> guess I better go out and inspect the camp so I know what's going on. Oh, you're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. You'll never... Oh, oh, there, soldier. Oh, gooey pooey. Where are you going with that suitcase? I'm not going to hold you. Me get you got a fire from Hami. Oh. Just got fired from the army. Eh? What for? Well, me camp a cook, uh -huh. And me serve him hot dog for lunch. And me was out of mustard. <laughs> so what? So me got the mustard out. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> was you a cook in civilian life, Louis Fooey? Oh, I sure. Can you take short orders? Uh-huh, can do. Okay, scram. Oh, you're in the army now. Hey, what did he call me? <laughs> you're not behind the plow. You'll never get... Oh, how do you do this again? Oh, hi, Mrs. Uppington. What are you doing in this army camp? Oh, I'm arranging a little dinner party, Mr. McGee. Some of the officers. The uh, higher officers, of course. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the higher officers. Mm -hmm. I always say, Zuppie, gold braid is where you find it. <laughs> yes, I feel it'd be such a distinguished gathering. So military, you know. <laughs> and it would be such a treat for them, too, Mr. McGee, to meet a nice, clean, wholesome surrounding. Don't you see so rarely? What do you mean, up? Why, there's nothing cleaner than an officer's diamond paint. Oh, but, Mr. McGee, when I made inquiries, I was told the officers were used to eating in their own mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm quite shocked, really, I was. Now, wait a minute, Uppy. Mess is just another thing for a dining room in the service. Oh, really? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, 
solid. Terrific. <laughs> If they do come, Mr. McGee, I hope they don't wear their swords and spurs because they're liable to get jingled. <laughs> oh, dear, I hope you won't think I'm just being a silly girl running out for a uniform. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye, <laughs> <laughs> McGee. After knowing a few society dames like her, it's easy to figure out how you get such a cold, damp handshake from them. They spend so much time in finger bowls. Oh, well, hi, Fibber. Oh, hi, Harpo. What you doing riding around in that tank? Oh, I'm in the tank floor. Haven't you heard? Why, no. What experience have you had with tanks? Who, me? Why, sure. Why, after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. <Mom. laughs> Why, after all these years of telling housewives how Johnson's glow coat will save them hours of housework because it requires no rubbing or buffing, what handled millions of tanks? You have? Tanks for telling them how to restore floors and linoleum. <laughs> tanks for making housework so easy. Tanks for the economical way of buying glow coat in the larger sizes. Tanks for making... Harpo, huh? If you don't mind my criticism, that commercial clanks worse than the tank. <laughs> well, that's gratitude for you. Here I go and get all greasy and bruised up for nothing. Okay, pal. <laughs> I'd have had him tossed in the guardhouse, only he'd have busted out with something about guarding houses against Mars and scratches with Johnson's waxes. If he ain't the most... Well, hello there, Peter. Oh, Mr. Popolis. Hi, miss. What is this unfounded rumors I'm hearing about you being a military advisory to the general staff? <laughs> or am I labeling under his title dumpling? <laughs> No, that's correct, Nick. Say, what you doing here? Oh, I'm coming down here for a visit with an old friend of mine, Peter. He's a brigamoose. Brigamoose? Brig oh, you mean a brigadier. I stand connected. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm being very enthusiastic about the military thing, Peter. Oh, that's all. So. I think it is being because I'm being a Greek people, and Greek people are always very defied at the drop of a hat falling down. <laughs> yeah, the Greeks have quite a warlike history, haven't they? Wasn't Helen of Troy? Oh, sure. Helen of Troy was quite a cupid, is it? <laughs> she had a port which is shipping a thousand launches. You mean she launched a thousand ships? Have it my way. <laughs> she was a very hysterical character, too. I'm reading a literary book about her last night, and it seems she's having a boyfriend who's calling himself by the name of Perry. You're probably not knowing about that, is it? If you would read more, you wouldn't be so illegitimate. <laughs> You mean illiterate. Why not? <laughs> anyway, this Pettis Squeezy is making a plan for this Helen Cupid, you grab me? Uh -huh. And as little totem of her esteem, she is giving him a golden apple. Yeah, I know all about the golden apple. And man. that is setting the president, Peter, because ever since those times, you will find the Greek people owning a fruit stand. <laughs> That's wrong, Peter. I'll see you later if I don't look out. <laughs> The trouble with that guy is he tried to cross an unabridged dictionary and fell in. Well, I better get on with this. Oh, uh, Major McGee, we were looking for you. Oh, hi. Oh, what's up? Well, we're planning our campaign, Major. Just step into my tent, please. Okay. There you are. Now, here's our problem, Major. Uh -huh. We're dividing the army into two forces, the red and the blue. Here, take a look at my map. I have been. You need a shave, bud. <laughs> no, I mean this military map. Now, you say that you're familiar with the local terrain. Why, Chuck, General, I know this country like the back of my hand, with mittens on. What do you want to know, bud? Here's the problem. Uh -huh. I propose to deploy the Red Forces in this area here. Machine gun emplacements here, a flanking movement here by this wooded patch, mm -hmm. then the cavalry and the motorized units will come this way. Oh, you're getting this all wrong, bud. Here, uh, uh, let me take that map. Uh, Give me a pencil. Uh, oh, sit down and relax. I'll figure out the tactics for you. Uh, have a cigar? Yeah, thanks. I have one. Mm -hmm. Got two? <laughs> now, here's the way to go. You put your infantry here, bring the tanks up here, engineers over here, and then when you come around this way, presto, hemmed in. Simple, ain't it? Yes, it seems very simple. Why, sure. Uh, thank you, Major. <laughs> uh, I believe that solves the whole problem. You certainly know this country, don't you? Oh, I'll think so. The only thing that puzzles me on this map is this hill over here to the north. I never knew that was there. <laughs> That's my finger. Oh. <laughs> well, good luck, General. Thank you, my boy. The maneuvers will start immediately. I'll issue the orders right away. Okay, General. And just to get your men into a fight and move, get them into a real military pitch of excitement, I'll have Major General Mills play something really stirring. 
What you got there, Major General Mills? Patty cake, patty cake. <laughs> patty cake, patty cake. Won't this infantry ever grow up? Well, go ahead, men. Patty cake, patty cake with the four notes. Well, right, that was the four notes, folks, singing Patty Cake, Patty Cake, accompanied by Butcher's Man Billy Mills. Nice cake and patties. My name's Marjorie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kids better go climb into a dugout someplace. There's a war about to start around here, and I don't want any of you to get hurt. Ah, there, my boy. Are you the officer of the day? <laughs> but I'm not only the officer of the day, I'm the man of the hour and chief of dinner. Sit down, and I'll split a second with you. <laughs> By the way, ain't you Horatio K. Boomer? In the flash, my boy, in the lovely quibble flash. <laughs> have here, have here an article which should be of great interest to every army officer in this great and glorious land of freedom. The land where... Okay, get to the point, Boomer. What you got? A Sam Brown belt with a roller skate attachment. <laughs> You've heard the old aphorism, I have no doubt, that uh, an army marches on its stomach. Okay. And this remarkable device will enable regiment after regiment to skip across hill and dale with a minimum amount of wear and tear on the bosom. <laughs> now, this article... Listen, is like... Boomer, you can't sell anything to this for me unless you got authorization from the War Department. Ah, yes, authorization. I'm glad to show it to you, Rabbit Nose. <laughs> Very happy to. Let me see now. Authorization, authorization. Try to put that authorization. Here's a small rat tail file. I tried to give it to a friend of mine, but the warden smelled him out. <laughs> Autograph for old Hetty Lamar. Wrote it myself. Was afraid she couldn't spell Horatio. <laughs> Package of $20 bills. Don't touch them. Not quite dry yet. <laughs> a false mustache with a slight smear. <laughs> and a check, check for a short beer. Well, well, well. No authorization. Imagine that. Could have sworn I had it with me. At least I could have sworn when you asked for it. <laughs> I'll be back some other time, Cashew. Right now, I have to run back to my hotel while it's still light enough to locate the fire escape. <laughs> that guy ever did have authorization. It must have been from the Secretary of the Ulterior. Uh-oh. The war started. Somebody shot the bugler. <laughs> That's the most intelligent beginning of a war I ever heard. <laughs> Pretty short war. <laughs> I wonder what happened to that guy. Why didn't he? What did I do? And you told me you were an authority on military tactics. Well, an authority on local geography. Throw him in the guardhouse, men. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I have a better idea. Hey, say, what is this? Did something go wrong, General? Do you, do you know what you've done? Well, now, let me think. <laughs> I'll tell you. Huh? You sent our tanks through a swamp. You sent our cavalry swimming across a four-mile lake. The infantry fell in the drainage canal. Our machine gun emplacements were run over by passing freight trains. And our entire division was cornered in a dead-end street. <laughs> oh, the dead-end kid. <laughs> it's crazy, ye, that's what it is. Blindfold him in. Right, 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 wait a minute. I'll kick him. Hey, let go of me. Quiet, you. Take him out and stand him with back to the wall. Hey, you can't do this to me. Come on, you. I'm an American citizen. I demand a trial. You can't Quiet. stand back. You're a military officer and subject to military discipline. Where's the firing spot? Here they come, General. <laughs> You have a final cigarette, McGee? You better send for a carton, bud. I, I'm a chain smoker. <laughs> but listen, you can't do this to me. I'm a problem. Enough of this. I ain't caught. Attention. Oh, oh, now, listen. I didn't mean to do nothing. I was... When I stop this handkerchief, fire. One. Oh. Two. Oh, oh, please, don't do this. Fire. Major McGee, your, your services are no longer required. <laughs> Hollywood, we regret very much that we had to lose our old friend.
Tilly Watson for the time being, but because of these commitments, he couldn't make the trip with us now. Although we hope he'll be back with us soon. Uh, say, Fibber. What, Harpo? Is it true that we're going to have Zazu Pitts on our show again next week? Yes, it is, Harpo. I thought as long as this program tonight was full of cannons and shooting and stuff, kind of fortissimo, that <laughs> next week we ought to go a little bit <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Book, Christine Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next week. Good night. <laughs>